What advice would you give to young people today? Maybe they're teenagers in high school, maybe early college. Uh, what advice would you give to a career or have a life they can be proud of? Yes. Well, I'd be very diffident, really, um, about offering any any wisdom. But uh, <laughs> I think I think that they they should they should realize that. Um, uh, um, the choices they make at that time are um, important. And um, from experience of I've had and with many friends, um, many people don't realize that opportunities are open until it's too late. They somehow think that some opportunities are only open to a few privileged people and they don't even try yeah. and, and that they could succeed. Um, but um, uh, if I focus on people working in um, some profession I know about like science, I would say pick an area to work in where new things are happening, uh, where uh, you can uh, do something that the old guys never had a chance to think about. Um, don't go into a field that's fairly stagnant because then um, there won't be much to do or you'll be trying to tackle the problems that the old guys got stuck on. And so I think in science, um, uh, I can give people good advice that they should um, for, uh, pick a subject where there are exciting new developments and also, of course, something which uh, suits their style because even within science, which is just one profession, um, there's a big range of style between the sort of solitary thinker, the person who does field work, the person who works in a big team, etc., and whether you like computing or uh, mathematical thought, etc. So pick some subject that suits your style and where things are happening fast. Um, and uh, be prepared to be flexible. Mm -hmm. That's what, what I'd say, really. Keep your eyes open for the opportunity throughout, like you said. Go yep. to a new field. Go to yes. a field where new cool stuff is happening. Yeah, and yeah. Just keep your eyes open. Yes, Don't that's past astuteness. But I think most of us, and I include myself in this, didn't realize these sort of things until too late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this applies way beyond science. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. What do you make of this finiteness of our life? Do you think about death? Do you think about mortality? Do you think about your mortality? And are you afraid of death? Well, I mean, I'm not afraid because I, I think I'm lucky. I feel lucky to have lasted as long as I have um, and, uh, and to have been fairly lucky in, um, in my life in many respects compared to, to most people. So I feel very fortunate. Um, uh, it, this reminds me of this current uh, um, emphasis on uh, living much longer than these so-called Altos laboratories, mm -hmm. um, which have been set up by uh, billionaires. Um, uh, there's one in San Francisco, one in uh, La Jolla, I think, and one in Cambridge. And uh, they're, they're funded by um, these guys who, when young, wanted to be rich, and now they're rich, they want to be young again. And they won't <laughs> find that quite so easy. And yeah. do we want this? I don't know. If, if, if there was um, some elite that was able to live much longer than others, that would be a really fundamental kind of inequality. And um, I think um, uh, if it happened to everyone, then that might be an improvement. It's not so obvious. Um, but uh, uh, I, I think um, uh, for my, my part, I think to have uh, lived as, as long as most people um, and had a fortunate life is all I can expect and a lot to be grateful for. Those are all platitudes. Well, I am in incredibly honored that you sit down with me today. I thank you so much for a life of exploring some of the deepest mysteries of our universe and um, of our humanity and thinking about our future with existential risks that are before us. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's a huge honor, Martin, that you sit with me, and I really enjoyed it. And well, uh, thank you, Lex. I thought we couldn't go on for as long as this, but we could have gone on much longer. I think <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah.